say thank you so much for joining us here at Super thank Return you. International. Where do you see the greatest opportunities lying at the moment for firms like yours? I think the market is growing, so anybody that is participating in this market should be benefiting from the growth that we see. This growth is going to be coming from different areas. One clearly is the retail side, you know, the private banking opportunity, which is something that we have been doing for the last 17 years, so it's nothing new for us. Second, we see a lot of opportunities in the SMA market, the segregated managed account market. And in particular for us, as the market keeps growing in scale, we see a very interesting opportunity serving the sort of small to mid-sized institutional end of the market. It was interesting that given the climate, people think this is a very tricky economic and geopolitical climate, that you are seeing those opportunities still. Well, the opportunity is the market is growing because, for example, on the retail side, they have been underserved. So that opportunity is there regardless on whether the choppy markets are going to be there. Clearly, the geopolitical situation and the uncertainty around rates, inflation, etc., is not something that typically is well perceived by investors. In private markets, those circumstances tend to be great opportunities to invest. Now, the opportunities that I'm talking about is, is, is trying to serve underpenetrated markets. And those are the ones that in the next 10 years will continue to grow. And you see it as key that people are experts in those areas. It's key, key to be local, if you like, in the areas that you're going to cover. In particular, in the smaller end of the market, institutional market, you need to be local because you need to be a full service uh, provider. Full, full service providers means not only giving access to the alternative space, but also having hand-holding, helping them in monitoring, in, in, in projections, in having look-through analysis, in, in many other things that is not just simply providing a product or giving access to the alternative space. So being local is important because you need to understand local regulations, because you need to understand what are the problems that you need to solve for different type of investors. So this is in fact a global industry but you need to be local to be able to serve your clients well. So that's finding value. What do you see is happening and what have you learned from previous cycles in terms of valuations in this market? Yeah, what you tend to see is when valuations in the public markets go down, in private markets should go down as well, but it takes longer and typically it's, it's less pronounced on the way down. But in private markets, you have two sides of the equation. One is the invested portion of your portfolio, the other one is the committed capital that is ready to be deployed. These are exactly the right times to put money to work. So this, there's an opportunity and, and, and a threat in our existing positions, but this is the right time to actually start committing more money and, and, and be able to make investments at a much better valuations. And what do you expect to see in a seeing at the moment in terms of secondaries as well? Well, the secondary market will take time. When you see valuations coming down, what you typically see is that it takes a little bit of time to see transactions being completed because you want to see how these valuations in private markets adjust to the new level and it typically takes one or two quarters. We saw that in COVID where six months you saw very little uh, transacted uh, volume but you know we think this time will happen something similar probably you'll see a slowdown in, in activity until valuations really go to the level that, that it is you know, where, where prices get, get, get um, adjusted. And in terms of that sort of muting or slowing down, is that also to be seen in terms of fundraising? Well, fundraising is a good question because people say that there's been a flood of money going after, uh, after uh, private markets. Reality is that it's been very concentrated in a few big names. So big names and good stories really get, get sold very quickly. Some people are struggling, so you have a little bit of a barbell story in that regard. So I, I, I think, you know, valuations uh, um, will impact, you know, because of the denominator effect as valuations in public markets go down. You know, the position that some investors have in, in private markets go up artificially. So that will probably produce a little bit of a slowdown in terms of the appetite of some institutional investors. However, we see that compensated a bit on the, on, the, on the private banking side where there's significant demand. What would you hope somebody took away from a conversation with you this week, just finally? What would be your key message of the week? Well, I mean, I think it's time to be very prudent. I think uh, we are all uh, stewards of capital and I think we, we, we need to be um, not conservative but cautious. I mean, we are seeing very, very difficult times from a geopolitical standpoint interest rates, inflation, there's a lot of uncertainty out there. 
But the beauty is that we have a lot of patient capital, so it is the time to really reflect on which sectors have good, good tailwinds, which ones have um, you know, difficulties for the next several years. So it's time of opportunities, but it's also time for being very patient and being very prudent. Jose, thank you so much for sharing your oh, thoughts. Thank you very today. much.